I think it's about time we discuss the big question around electric vehicles, and that is why I think hydrogen cars shouldn't happen. And we'll be looking at the science and also my own bias on why I think that we should save hydrogen for getting to Mars. Now this question actually did disappear, the hydrogen question just kind of disappeared completely with electric cars getting more popular and more and more make coming out of electric cars. But weirdly recently more people have been asking me what about hydrogen instead of electric cars and it's a question that I thought was dead but a local transition group who I did a talk, free charity talk for asked me what about hydrogen and these are a group of people that are environmentally conscious and you know not the naysayers of electric vehicles but because that question's come up i thought i'd better do a proper video and address it but before we get into all the science and all the bias let's get some basics about hydrogen first now hydrogen is one of the most abundant elements in the entire universe it is never gonna run out we're not gonna use all the hydrogen up it is pretty much impossible it's also completely co2 neutral to burn it doesn't you know do any damage to the environment using hydrogen so it's a great positive in that respect however to separate hydrogen to make hydrogen to create it and then store it requires using vast amounts of electricity which my argument would be better spent just going straight into an electric car but we're going to get into that part in a minute a hydrogen car uses hydrogen obviously to mix with oxygen which then makes electricity this hydrogen is stored in an extremely high pressure tank system and then once that electricity is made it then gets stored in an electric battery and then that electric battery then powers a motor so basically after the hydrogen conversion part it's an electric car it's an electric motor an electric battery much the same way as your electric car it just has an onboard power station that converts this hydrogen to mix with oxygen and create that electricity so yeah an electric car without a plug you know basically it's a self-charging hydrogen car i can see that term coming already when toyota decide to go down that route but it's basically a range extender it's using a, a a power source to charge up a battery which then runs the wheels why now we've got some of the basics of how hydrogen works let's actually look at some of the drawbacks <sighs> like petrol you can fill it up at a filling station and like petrol it's an extremely flammable liquid which never goes wrong does it no no flammable liquids are fine unlike petrol though it is stored at a extremely high pressure which makes flammable liquids a little bit more fun to deal with fun meaning not fun and your tank in your car is pressurized and so is the tank at the filling station which will fuel your hydrogen powered car now everyone might go yeah but we you know we're used to filling up cars with petrol just filling up with hydrogen is going to be no difference apart from it it's going to have a couple of difference first of all you have to lock the hydrogen fuel nozzle into your car to create a seal because both tanks are pressurized and will be filling up at pressure so you lock the tank in and you start to fill now the locking and unlocking and filling of your tank will take about five minutes which you know isn't too much longer than petrol fair enough however unlike petrol when you drive away from this hydrogen fuel station that hydrogen fuel station needs to recharge its pressure for the loss of pressure it's just received which can take 15 minutes before the next person can then fill up now to put that into perspective uh, that's five minutes to fill up let's just say we two cars arrive at the same time 15 minutes to fill up so we're now at 20 minutes and then you need to fill up so that's 25 minutes now if you're an electric vehicle owner you'll know that that's about the same amount of time you'd spend on a high powered rapid charger 150 or 350 kilowatt charger so you might as well have just bought an electric car yeah however electric car owners don't 
tend to sit around for filling up. Yes, it can happen on long journeys and occasionally, yes, we do need to rapid charge fill up on a long journey. Um, but I don't know, most electric car owners I know who you know have access to home charging, for example, they'll plug in and go to bed and wake up with a full battery. I mean, that's what I do every day. It takes me about hmm, 10 seconds to plug the car in and about 10 seconds, well, no, it takes me about 20 seconds to unplug it in the morning because I tend to be a little bit more sleepy um, and then coil it round and, and get in my car with a full tank. Um, so yeah, uh, why would I want to go back to going to a fuel station, queuing up and paying for stuff when I can just literally plug in at home? And there's some other advantages with that as well of charging at home and that other advantage of filling up with home well you can't make hydrogen at home but you can make electricity and you can make electricity using wind turbine at home or you could use solar energy on your roof and you could literally make free electricity to drive to work and drive home and do all your errands for free you can also be paid for exporting electricity using a company like Optibus. So even now that feed-in tariffs have disappeared, you can put solar on your roof, wind turbine, and these guys will pay you for basically putting it back to the grid. I mean, you can just sign up to a 100% you know, renewable tariff from Octopus. And if you want that link, there's a link down below in the description and uh, you get 50 quid for signing up. Now, as I mentioned before, and a hydrogen car is essentially an electric vehicle because it has a motor and a battery. But you also have to create this hydrogen. Now, to create hydrogen, you will use electricity. And anyone who knows the basic laws of physics is that every time that you move a piece of energy, there'll be losses incurred because you can't 100% efficiently transfer energy from one source to another, to another, to another, to another without some losses because it's just the way physics works. It will either be lost in heat or it will be lost in light or basically other things. You can't lose energy, but you can lose the energy transfer through other sources and that's just physics. And I've got a lovely little chart that has been provided by someone called I know called uh, Dr. Ewan Matuk. He got this from a university that's quoted down below. And if you want to see his video on hydrogen, I fully recommend that you go and check it out. There will be a link down to it in the description. But as you can see from this chart, that the efficiency losses are as follows. We start off with 100 kilowatt hours of power. That's just for argument's sake. Let's just say we're starting off with a 100 units on both sides for cars. So basically 100 units of AC electricity. And we'll go down the electric car route because uh, yeah, it's more efficient. So the electric from the grid is AC, it's generated at AC, and we put it down the transmission lines and we lose 10 units, 10%. So we are now down to 90 units. Then we have to convert that AC to DC electric conversion in your battery. So when you charge your battery at home, that power of AC is reconverted back to DC and we will lose 15%. By the way, if you want to learn more about how AC and DC electricity works, there is a video top right that I did a couple of weeks ago. But now we've converted 15% loss and we are now down to 77 units. So now we've got it in the electric car and with regenerative braking and the way the car works, etc., we're going to lose another 10%. So we are now down to 69 units. In other words, We've gone from 100 kilowatt hours of power to 69 kilowatt hours of power. That's, you know, it's a it's a loss and it's not a massive loss, but it's a loss of power. Let's have a look at what hydrogen is like. Now, hydrogen can be created in two different ways and we'll do them both at the same time for simplified ease of use of making this graph. So you first got the AC to DC conversion. There is a 5% loss for that. So we're now down to 95 units. And the electrolysis will take 25% loss. So we're now down to 71 units. So we're almost at the complete unit cost of what an electric car would be at the end. And we've not even made any hydrogen yet. So let's make some hydrogen. Uh, we can use compression or we can use liquid we can you know liquefaction i can't say that word uh, 
If we go through compression, which is a slightly better way, there's a 10% loss. We're now down to 64 units and electric cars already won. Then we've got delivery of this fuel source. That's another 20% loss. We're now down to 51 units. Then we've got it in the fuel cell vehicle. We're going to lose 50%. We're now down to 26 units. Then the fuel cell vehicle has got to run and power it, etc. We're now down to 23 units. That's 23 kilowatts from 100 kilowatts. And it's even worse on the liquefaction side. We lose 35%. We're down to 46 units. We deliver it, 10% 10, 10 loss. We're now down to 42 uh, units. And then we put it in the fuel cell again a 50 percent loss we're now down to 21 units and we put it in the fuel cell vehicle and we lose another 10 percent and we're now down to 19 units that's 19 kilowatt hours from 100. so yeah hydrogen is not the answer we are basically going to be paying shell bp or whichever company decides to start running hydrogen power stations for these losses that they're not going to just give you free power if they're paying for 100 kilowatts of power at the start they will want to be paid for that 100 kilowatts at the start would you not be better paying for that 100 kilowatts at the start and instead of receiving 19 or 23 at the end you'd be receiving 69 so it's obvious that hydrogen is going to be way more expensive to run and use and it's also a waste of our resources. If we're going to move along this world being more sustainable and more resourceful, then hydrogen is not the answer. Now, as I mentioned, it's expensive to produce and that is because of those losses, but it's also quite expensive to make a hydrogen car. They are way more expensive to buy than an electric vehicle. And a lot of people's questions and arguments of not buying an electric car is because they're more expensive than petrol cars and they you know they're the same people that go oh, i'm going to wait for a hydrogen car if you think electric cars are expensive hydrogen cars are going to be double because not only have you got the elements of an electric car a battery and a motor but you've also got this fuel cell system to deal with and then all the benefits and disadvantages of the costs of it so yeah you want an electric car you don't want a hydrogen car because of the absolute stacked and stacked and stacked on prices that i've just mentioned and why would you want to go for something which is no different to what you have just because petrol cars have been going in and the, you know they've been working for you doesn't mean that sitting at a petrol station and filling up with fuel is the correct way we've been doing life wrong save time in your life and buy an electric car and wake up every day with a full charge now i do also hear the argument of people saying what about trucks well tesla are going to be making a truck called the semi tesla truck and that is a electric powered truck the advantage with a truck is that to get more range you put more batteries on and it's a truck so therefore weight doesn't really matter too much so you just keep cramming and cramming and cramming these batteries on top and you'll get the range that you need and the other thing with trucks is you're going to say yeah oh, yeah but if they have big batteries they're going to have to spend a long time charging yes they do and we they will have bigger and faster charges for trucks but the other thing that happens with trucks that doesn't happen with say you as a personal driver is that trucks have to take breaks they have to have a break there's legal stopping distances that they have to stop at for breaks by law and that is just the fact so what you do is you schedule their breaks near these charging stations and they'll have dedicated truck stops for electric trucks with charging stations and all the facilities for charging and the facilities for the truck driver to have their break in peace and charge up while they're there and i also heard the argument for ships <laughs> Again, ships, have, a lot of people don't know this, ships have been electric for a very, very long time. They have a diesel generator that powers an electric motor and the electric motor is basically the propeller on the back of the boat. So they've been electric for a very, 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 very long time. So you could just move out the diesel generator and replace it with a hydrogen. And yeah, I can see the advantage with that, that there's some advantages of storing the fuel like that on a pressurized system. Um, but why couldn't you just put a load of batteries and, you know, yes, it might weigh a bit more, but how much does 
several gallons and you know of hydrogen going to weigh it, it's it's a it's a toss up and yeah the the only one I can answer the question on is ships now I'm not anti hydrogen as this video might point out you might think that I'm anti hydrogen now I'm not I like I said at the beginning of the video think we should save hydrogen for going to Mars because hydrogen is brilliant in rockets. It's very explosive and very powerful and will launch a rocket into space, no problem. So save the hydrogen for blasting us up to space. Just in case we ruin this planet, we need a second alternative. And that's what hydrogen should be used for, is finding us an alternative method and an alternative planet for when we ruin this one. Because let's be honest, we're humans, we're gonna ruin this one eventually. We need somewhere else to live and ruin their planet as well. If you can think of one alternative reason why hydrogen is better than an EV, leave it in the comments below and let me know. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to subscribe. Consider looking at Patreon, really helps me buy new equipment. And check out these other videos down here. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.